doing what he usually does, which is drive a kickoff out of the end zone. Pickett very excited about the new offense, Todd. Yeah. Mark Whipple is the play caller, veteran of college and the NFL. So they'll throw the football more than they have in recent years, but they begin with A.J. Davis testing the middle and gaining nothing. Yeah, and it'll be a lot more quick early throws. I think that Mark Whipple knows the pass rush ability of the Penn State defense is legitimate. So he wants the ball out of his quarterback's hand quickly, especially early in the game. A lot of quick throws. Pickett, a junior from New Jersey, will get a quick throw, and it's immediately dropped by Maurice French in the flat. He's the guy they want to get plenty of touches, very dangerous with the ball, but now it's third and long. And this is what you want to avoid against this Penn State defense. Third and long, where those two defensive ends, that defensive front four, can really pin their ears back and come after the football. Yitor Gross Matos, one of the best in college football, number 99, at rushing the passer. Penn State defense that's had 89 sacks the last two years combined and off to a good start this year. Students at the right end making noise. Matos is going against the sophomore lineman. Pickett throws underneath. Catch made by Taysir Mack, but he'll be dropped right there by John Reed. Well short of the first down of the Panthers go three and out. John Reed has battled some injuries. He's back healthy this year and confident. Really had the play that turned the game around last week against Buffalo with the pick six. That was an excellent open field tackle. Kurt Christodoulou was the punter for Pittsburgh who had a nightmarish afternoon in last year's loss to Penn State. Dropped a snap and a low punt return for a touchdown. You got to be careful where you kick the ball to this guy too. K.J. Hamler, very dangerous. Plan usually is for teams to kick it away from him and Hamler has to retreat and make a fair catch about the 26-yard line. Broke the Penn State freshman record for all-purpose yards last year. Journey Brown takes over his first career start at tailback. And they play action fake. They throw it in the tight end. Frymuth has the catch, and he's still running out across the 40, a first down. Driven out by Paris Ford. Well, we talked about quick throws for Kenny Pickett. Here's a quick throw for Sean Clifford to a very reliable target. Frymuth had a huge game last week, two touchdowns. And he is so thick in his lower body that you better bring a lot to try to get him on the ground. The physical matchup problem. Clifford scrambles and now will eat it and be knocked down for a one yard loss by Jalen Twyman and Elias Reynolds. Jalen Twyman has really become the most productive guy on this defensive front. Pitt lost two of their starting, two of their best defensive linemen to knee injuries, one before the season, one in week one. And Twyman is the guy who has really stepped up three sacks last weekend. And yeah, Rashad Weaver and Keyshawn Camp, ACL's non-contact injuries, so they're shorthanded up there. And this is Brown, his first carry as the starting tailback. We still expect to see a rotation of four running backs for the Lions today. Yeah, they feel like they've got four guys they can win with. They don't have a set rotation necessarily. Eventually, they hope somebody will emerge, and they hope that somebody will kind of go with the hot hand. But for right now, they're comfortable with playing four different guys. Brown, a speedster, ran a 10.4300 meter, broke the Pennsylvania State High School record. You got Hamler in the slot right here. He's the focal point. If we're looking the other direction, pressured again, able to escape. He's got room to run. Cuts it up, and now we'll head out of bounds. First down yardage to the Panthers, 42. Well, it was a good job of collapsing the pocket, but you got to get him on the ground. Pitt rushes four here, and they do a good job of forcing him out of the pocket, but they can't get Sean Clifford to the ground. And Sean Clifford last week had a 58-yard run. That's a big run on third down to move the chains. And he got 13 yards. Third down has been a serious problem for this offense. He told us yesterday he was going to kind of take more responsibility with the third down situation, and he did right there with his legs. Despite scored a bunch of points in two games, it's three of 17 on third down. Clifford from the pocket, zips it short and incomplete off the hands of Hamler. Still has a very surreal feel yeah, in the stadium. It it's, it's eerily quiet, again, with the crowd being asked to leave the stadium and then come back in. And it has really changed the, the atmosphere yeah, here. Yeah, it's a little quiet. For as many people as there are in here right now, it, it feels kind of quiet. Second and ten. Yeah. 
If we're straight back, hit, ball comes That's out on the ground, and the Lions retain possession. Hit by the blind side. Michael Menet, the, the center, prevented the turnover, but Phil Campbell came on the blitz. Yeah, Phil Campbell is right here, and he's going to come to the blind side of the quarterback, and Sean Clifford doesn't see him. The tight end releases free. There's nobody to pick up that linebacker, and a well-timed and a well-designed blitz knocks the ball loose. Now it's third and very long for Sean Clifford in the Nittany Lion offense. Problems on third down have gone back a few years for this Penn State offense, even when they were loaded with playmakers. Not much you can do about third and 23. Play action, and Clifford gets the ball out. Sideline catch made by Justin Shorter, and he'll be well short of the first down. Well short, but they hit Sean Clifford again. Now, they brought pressure again on this third and long. Even though he got the completion, they knocked him around twice in this possession, and that's something Pat Narduzzi has to feel good about. At the time, it was Kylan Johnson, the grad transfer from Florida, the linebacker. So Penn State stalls. And now Jake Penninger will try to pit, uh, pin the Panthers deep. Drops the point, kicks a high boot, which French will come up and make a fair catch as the rain begins to fall again here in Happy Valley. Rain falling. Low snap, pick it. Hands to Davis, but immediate penetration by Micah Parsons, who led the team in tackles last year as a freshman. Uh, he read it and diagnosed it very quickly. I mean, he saw this play, never even bought on pass. Here's Parsons. He's going to read it right now, get right up into the hole and make the play. Nobody there to account for him. You hope on the draw fake that he's going to take a couple steps back. He diagnosed it very quickly. Parsons, one of those freaky athletes, made so many plays last year out of the structure of the defense. They're happy that he's buying in and playing within the structure more. On second and long, Davis again tries to pick his way, but they've tested the middle of this Lions defensive front. They've been up to it so far. Yeah, they were able to run the football with some effectiveness last year or last week. The first game against Virginia, they did not. Now, this is a team that has four new starting offensive linemen. And they lost two running backs that both ran for over a thousand yards last year. So it's a different type of team with a different offensive coordinator. And again, another third and long situation for Kenny Pickett. Students making noise. Lions showing pressure and they bring it. And Pickett has to get the ball out quickly. But he's got Davis open in the flat. And he squirts between defenders and is still running. Into Penn State territory, a huge gain as they dump it out short on third down. Jonathan Sutherland saved the touchdown. Great call because Penn State was blitzing. And they slipped the back out on the screen and nobody picks him up. I think Cam Brown, number six, was supposed to be in coverage. But he got picked off on the inside. And it was a perfect call by Mark Whipple on third and long to go with the screen. A 48-yard catch and run sets up the Panthers at the Penn State 40. Davis, who only caught three passes last year, was the third string guy, is the man this year. Down the middle, it's a high throw, incomplete, trying to get it to Maurice French. They've tried to target him twice. They had him, too. That was just a, a super athletic play by Micah Parsons. He dropped in coverage and used that length and his jumping ability to get a hand on the football because French was open behind him. We'll see Parsons all over the field. Fun to watch. Yeah. Green coming down a little harder now. This is Davis with a handoff and another short game. It'll set up another third and long. Cam Brown on the tackle. Yeah, they just brought an extra rusher on that play. And, you know, that's Brent Price kind of deal. On first and second down, he's more heavy blitz than he is on third down. Cam Brown's a guy he likes to really rush from the perimeter. And he ran right into that play. Lions not showing as much pressure this time on third and long. Fumbled snap. Pickett has to pick it up and scramble, and he'll be dropped well short by Parsons again. You know what? In this game last year that I did, it was raining even harder than this, and Kenny Pickett had trouble with the wet ball. It, it got to him a little bit. Just didn't field the snap. It was a good snap. He just didn't field it cleanly. 
and ended up just having to get what he could on the scramble. But you have to really make sure you catch the football first and foremost, whether you're a quarterback in a shotgun, whether you're a punter, like we'll see right now, the rain, you just have to account for it. Grew up in Jersey, and Pickett played in a lot of bad weather in his high school career, he told me, but he also struggled in wet conditions in the yeah. ACC championship game against Clemson. Struggled for lots of reasons that night. So Chris Tadulu, the Aussie, with the play clock winding down, he'll take the delay of game and give him five more yards to work with. Yeah, I think they called a timeout. There's no foul for delay of game. Timeout. Pittsburgh. Okay, so they spend one, and they'll take it with them. Arduzzi had three choices. You could try to go for it on fourth and seven. You could try a really long field goal. Alex Kessman has great range, but maybe not in this weather. But he sent out Chris Dudulo after the timeout to try to knock the Lions back deep. Hamler is at his 10-yard line. May become one of those field position yeah. kind of turnover games in these conditions. Kicks it high and short, and Hamler will let it bounce. And it'll oh, die perfect. right there. It cannot execute it better than that. And that's, in the rain, Penn State backed up at the two. And that's where the wet field probably comes in handy, too. Stops that football. To Holly Rowe. You guys, Penn State fans are so excited about this new duo they're seeing on the field. New quarterback Sean Clifford in his first year as a starter and his special chemistry he's developing with A.J. Hamler. They actually met as junior high students when they would go to football camps. Sean Clifford from Ohio, KJ from Michigan, and they'd say, hey, are you gonna go to this camp? Yes, they developed chemistry there. They actually won MVPs of one camp for rivals in Ohio. Then they both decided, hey, let's go to Penn State together. That special connection has been a long time in the making. Social media allows players to recruit each other. This is Journey Brown took the handoff in the end zone and works his way back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, how ironic, an Ohio kid, a Michigan kid, they both up at yeah. Penn State. Chemistry is evident, and any smart quarterback would want to get the ball to Hamler. Yeah. They've tried once in the first possession. It was a drop. Second and nine. Now this kid has not played a lot, but he sure does not lack confidence. I was impressed when we met him yesterday. Rolls out and flips it incomplete, trying to get the ball to Brown. It'll be a challenge yeah. catching the football today. And that's a that's a hard catch for a running back. It's on his back shoulder. He's got bigger shoulder pads than a wide receiver. You want to throw this out in front of him so he can catch it and run like a running back. That's that's too hard of an ask, especially on a wet day for a running back to make that play. Panthers hit Clifford twice the first series. Now he lines up in the end zone on third and nine. And Pittsburgh moving around pre-snap. Yeah, that's what they do on third down. First down and second down, they're pretty standard in the way they line up. They go to a three-man front on third down and really get a little more exotic. It's a handoff, and Brown busts a tackle and has a first down and more. He's got great speed. Journey Brown down the sidelines. Can they angle him out? They'll catch him from behind, but all the way at the Panthers' 14 as Brown makes an explosive play in his first start. Really nice job by Fryermuth, the tight end. He's kind of got the block that springs him. Watch Fryermuth come across the formation, get the kickout block. A very conservative call on third down, back way up. About three missed tackles, and then you see the speed of Journey Brown take over. One good block at the point of attack, a couple missed tackles, and then speed does the rest. Devin Ford, the true freshman, gives him a breather, but Clifford looking to throw in the middle, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Paris Ford. Ford, weaving his way, slips a tackle, and they'll finally chase him down at the 45-yard line. There are a couple of flags down way back in the defensive secondary. Yeah, they're going to call pass interference, I think. Friermuth was the intended receiver, and they came over and made contact with him. Riley Johnson is an ACC crew. The visiting team brings their officials in this series. Yeah. So you're going to see the contact by Cam Bright, number 38, right there. He kind of pulled the arm down, and Paris Ford was able to come in and make the interception. Good call. You're going to do whatever you can to cover Frymuth. Oh, He's yeah. a big body. Maybe not as much of a vertical threat as Mike Kosicki, but he has really worked on his strength and speed in the offseason. Well, again, he's got such a thick lower body, and, and he can still run, but he is going to be a hard guy to, to match up with because of his strength. 
good play action fake that time on first down by Sean Clifford, and they got what they wanted, got the penalty. Devin Ford, the touted recruit out of Virginia, is still the tail back to the left of Clifford. First and goal. He's got it, and they push the pile down near the goal line. They'll spot him just short. Yeah, just a kind of a wall of blue shirts. There was no penetration by the pit defense that time, and they just kind of kept pushing the pile, getting closer to that goal line. Lions have been an efficient red zone offense. And standing up is Devin Ford as Penn State goes the length of the field to take the lead. Mike Miranda in there at right tackle with an outstanding block. Just took his man and turned him right out of the hole. And that's why Ford was able to stand up on his way into the end zone. Watch Miranda right here. Just turn his man right out. Actually, he's in there at right guard. It's a great block. And Ford runs right off his hip. Vinegar for the extra point. So the true freshman gets his second career touchdown, but the 85-yard run by Journey Brown was yeah. the key of the season. ABC tonight in prime time. Sean McDonough honored there at his alma mater. We'll join Kirk and Maria Taylor on the call. And another long boot by Stout out of the end zone, and the Panthers will take over. And now we'll check in with Cassidy Hubbard in the studio. That help me out with this if you can. I, yeah, but I, Big Ten opener for both teams. Penn State has a week off. They'll begin conference play at Maryland. So Pittsburgh, this is a team that will be tested today. How resilient are they? Yeah, well, I think this is a very important possession. I think it's important they get a chunk play on an early down, too. They just yeah. have had nowhere to run the football. They, they had two yards rushing coming into that play, and that's going to probably put them at dead even zero. Slavik Carter. They've tried to test the midsection of this Penn State front and with no success so yeah. far. Robert Windsor, number 54. Antonio Shelton, number 55 in there, clogging things up in the middle. You got speed rushers on the edge. You got a couple of 300 pounders in the middle. It's an impressive group. Look at under center. Carter again. Kind of a newcomer on the scene. They're searching for a hot hand. It's tough to replace Kadri Ellison, who's with the Falcons, and, and Darren Hall, who combined for almost 2,500 yards last year. Yeah, they're just finding no running areas right now. The best play they had was the screen on third and long, and here they are again with another third and long situation. And you're not going to make a living against this Penn State defense the way they're built with a lot of third and long situations. It's the problem frequently last year. Run, run, punt. Pickett flips it across, and it's Mack on a crossing route. He's knocked down just Close. short of the marker. Showed the burst of speed, but Keaton Ellis, the true freshman corner, stopped him. Yeah, and he did a really good job of turning right up field and trying to get that first down mark. He came up short, but he didn't try to run out, outrun the defense to the sideline. Still brings up a punting situation, so a good three and out by the Nittany Lion defense. You said it. They cannot make a living today. Third and nine, no. third and ten. They got success on the screen, which was a great call against the blitz. But it's going to be a long afternoon if they cannot have positive gains on first and second down. Again, you've got Hamler back to return this kick. He's going to retreat. Really good boot first to do, though. It's going to bounce Perfect out punt. of bounds. Another great punt by the Aussie, who's turning around what was a nightmarish game against the Nittany yeah. Lions a year ago for the. Man from Melbourne, so Penn State in back inside their five. 98-yard drive the last time they had it. All right, Todd, here's your flashback. 1981, biggest yeah. upset in series history. You go to Pittsburgh. Marino's ranked number one. 17-game winning streak. 48-14, yeah. <laughs> this is still a score they repeat to you around uh, here. It was, a, it was an incredible comeback. Kenny Jackson, who had a huge game, five catches, over 180 yards. That little pirouette on the sideline. We were down 14 to nothing in the first quarter, had minus one total yards of offense. We got that interception you saw, and things kind of 
slowed the tide, and then we took control of the game in the second half. Really fun game. Not for Pittsburgh fans. Nice. For Penn State people. <laughs> Play action to Slade, and this is K.J. Hamler on the edge. Shows his first. Hamler makes the cut. Midfield. And they finally grab him in Pittsburgh territory. DeMar Hamlin stopped him, but K.J. shows the speed. Well, the problem is Jason Pinnock, number 15, the corner. His eyes are on the quarterback. He thinks it's run. And so he bit on the run and got separation away from Hamler. And you cannot give him that much space. You have to get hands on him and stay close because he's so quick and gets the top speed. That was perfect design of the play call by Ricky Ronnie to show the run. The stop and go with that guy is something yeah. else. His first few steps as fast as anybody in the sport. That's why they call him the human joystick. 53-yard gain. Now Clifford pressured. Tries to heave it in the direction of Hamler. He's well covered by Pinnock that time and knocked down again, the quarterback. Well, guys, during the Penn State podcast last week, K.J. Hamler's parents were on, and I learned that he was so fast as a little kid, like a little tiny kid, three or four years old, that his dad turned his back for one split second in Home Depot, and Hamler was gone. His dad says, I remember just chasing him to the back of the store. I've never been so mad, but he's been fast his whole life. His mom said he runs his mouth fast and his legs fast. That's a good combination. Second down, Slade a short carry. You know the old saying, you have to walk before you can run? Not in his case. Like, right. He was running That's before he could walk. That's what I thought was hilarious. He, he, he skipped walking. He just went from <laughs> crawling to running. Yeah. Well, he is quick. And he's hard to jam, you know? I mean, you think, okay, he's 176 pounds. We can be physical with him. Well, if you try to jam and miss, he's gone. He's by you, and he has that ability when he gets the ball to make people miss as well. Third and 11. Slade is the back. Three receivers to the right. Clifford looking back to the left and now loops it short and it's incomplete. Once again, the quarterback knocked down. That was yeah. Patrick Jones in the pressure. They are delivering shots to yeah, Clifford. They, they're getting to the quarterback. I think Patrick Jones came on an end stunt. He's right here. He's going to work inside on this stunt right up the middle, right into the face of Sean Clifford. And that's a bad job by Ricky Slade, the back. He kind of turned his shoulder and kind of closed his eyes, helping out on that pass protection. And his quarterback paid the price. So the 53-yard gain to Hamler. The drive stalls. And here's Blake Gilligan. High punt. French will let it drop. And punters doing a good job. Both punters. Aided by the wet field. The Panthers once again pinned back with poor field position. All of their touchdowns have been scored in the second quarter. You take away that quarter, a couple of field goals, that's yeah. it. Well, and another slow start today. 12 plays, only 61, 62 total yards, and most of that came on that screen pass. So they've been very ineffective getting uh, getting started here. And fake it to Davis, pick and rolls. They got a hand on him. He got it away quickly, and French has spun out for a very short game. And what a play by Trent Gordon. I mean, they've got a third string corner in right now, Penn State. He fights off a block, and he still is able to uh, to make the tackle. He runs over, he'll get the call from the sidelines. Sometimes they'll signal he's a wristband. They're still trying to figure out the, the yeah, game mechanics. New system. I mean, even though Mark Whipple's been here and the offense has been in since last spring, there still is some things that happen in live games that they've got to kind of work the kinks out. And that's what Mark Whipple's trying to figure out with this group. Second and nine figures to be the final play of the quarter. Across the middle, this is French. He's pretty well guarded there by Jesse Lakeda, the linebacker. And he's driven out of bounds with the clock running down now at the end of the first quarter. He picked it in the first quarter. Listen to these yards to gain in the third down place for Pittsburgh. 10, 11, 10. 11. They were one of those four. They need six this time, Todd. Yeah, this is this is gravy here. Third and six. You got French out to one side, Mac the other way. Will Gregg, a tight end, is in the backfield to help block. And Pickett loops a long throw. A diving catch is made by Mac. And it's a first down. Well, that's what you need to do. You got to get the ball to those two guys, two and 11. And now I think they got to throw on this first down play. So far, Pitt has run five times on first down for a net of minus four yards. That first down run right now is not effective. Same look in the backfield. Pickett, pump fakes, tries to escape and now dumps it short. And dropped immediately as Bragg, the 
transfer from Arkansas. Garrett Taylor on the stop. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Penn State's defense is tackling well. That, that's the thing that I've seen so far in the first quarter. They are tackling better than the pit defense. I think both defenses have made a lot of good plays, but the tackling has been consistent for Penn State. Pick it. And the pocket rolls out a long throw. French made the catch and apparently kept the knee off the ground. Gets up and gains first down yardage across the 35. And a nice job by Pickett extending the play. He didn't get outside of the pocket. He just moved up inside of the rush. He knew he was going to take a hit. Watch him extend the play by moving up forward in the pocket and delivering the ball on target. Good job not to go down right there. See how he just kind of paused to make sure he was off the ground. That's nice That's well ankle done. mobility there. That's really well done. So the Panthers have moved it to the 35, and here's a first down run. Davis tries to pick his way on the right side, picks up just two. Penn State is doing the same thing they did in the Buffalo game, and that is playing a lot of people. They've got a lot of young linebackers, young defensive backs that they're rotating in. Part of that is to build depth on their team. Part of it is to keep a lot of guys engaged. And part of it is to find out who some of the key backups are going to be. They kind of know who their front guys are. You see some new guys in the lineup as well. Lupetta was one of those guys. Pick it on second and seven. Fires across the middle. And the catch is made by Aaron Matthews. And the quarterback gaining some confidence, getting some protection there in Penn State territory. Yeah, a little play fake held Cam Brown. Cam Brown, the linebacker, is right here. And he's going to be responsible for this drop area. The little play fake just held him enough. And a nice layer of possession or play that time. Four-man rush. High throw. Almost intercepted just off the hands of Garrett Taylor. Yeah. A little bit high. The other thing that Pitt did on that last completion, and this is something they show, and it creates some problem, is they moved the tackle, the left tackle, over to the right side of the formation. And that time, number six, who is lined up right here, he's lined up as a tackle. Here's the offensive tackle. That causes some identification problems for Cam Brown because that guy is an eligible receiver. And it was a well-conceived play call that time to get that throw. We'll see a few wrinkles today from Mark Whipple. Again, the new play caller for the Panthers. On second and ten, pressure, and they dump it to a screen. Davis, though, slips as he tries to make the first cut and has to fight for a short gain. Another third and long coming up. Yeah. Well, you see the speed of Brent Pry's defense. I mean, that's the one thing when you talk to him, you talk to James Franklin. What do you think about your defense? We're young, we're inexperienced in a lot of places, but we're fast. We, we've got speed and we've got some length, and we think we have a chance to be this to be the best defense that they've had since James has been the head coach here. Another third and long. They'll need eight. Davis, and again, the tight end Greg in the backfield. Pickett rolls, surveys, looking downfield, now is pressured and tries to get as close to the marker as he can, knocked down about the 44-yard line, so fourth down. Really good coverage because Pitt was trying to max protect, so they're keeping both of these backs in to help with protection. That means there's only three guys out in the route, and there's just a lot of blue jerseys in defense and really nowhere to go with the football for Kenny Pickett. Panthers will go for it. 0 for 2 on the young season. Fourth down situations. They need four. Empty backfield. They could actually also try to see if they could go with a long count and see if they could get an offsides penalty to get the automatic first down. In this new look, Penn State shuffling around trying to get ready. They'll throw it. It's complete. It's right near the marker. This will depend on the spot right at the 36. Mack made the catch. I think he got it by a few inches. Nice throw by Kenny Pickett that time. Shooting it in there low and away from the defender, and he wants to go right away. You have to stop and measure this. ACC officiating crew on the field. Big Ten up in the replay booth. Penalties have been a problem for Pittsburgh again this year. Ten for 75 yards against Ohio. Heavily penalized in last season's loss to Penn yeah, State. 14, 14 penalties yeah. in that game. 
And it is a fourth down conversion, so the drive continues. And now here's where I think, again, first down runs have not been there. Perfect situation for a play action, good protection, and take a throw towards the end zone. You've got French who can get there. You've got Mack who can get there. Challenge these corners, particularly number 19, Trent Gordon. The other guy on the other side, John Reed's more of a proven guy. If I was calling something, I'd go after Trent Gordon down here on the bottom, number 19. Play action. Pickett steps up and now escapes. Has room to run. And he will lower the shoulder and get knocked down at the 30. Yeah, it's a good decision. They did exactly what I thought. They went play action with max protection. It was a two-man route. Penn State was not fooled. They covered, and he made the right decision to run that football. Casey and Ken the Happy Valley. He made his first start late in the 17 season. The upset of Miami that helped reroute the Hurricanes that season. His dad, Ken, was an All-American linebacker at Shippensburg. Mom was a college athlete as well, soccer player. Mom looks very nervous. Yeah, <laughs> all moms do. That, that's a mom thing. Second and three. Pick it again. Delivers to Davis, and he's got a first down. Spinning inside the 20 so short throws to get the quarterback comfortable and he's been very accurate on this drive Yeah, and they've been keeping the backs in a lot to protect that time They free released the back out and Penn State was a little bit fooled by that and they got the easy easy conversion for a first down 14th play of this drive coming up Mark Whipple has decided to let Pickett throw the ball in early downs get him comfortable They want him to cut it loose this yeah. season not be risk averse Straight back, gets it out, catch made, and Trey Tipton bites down inside the 10. Senior from Apollo, Pennsylvania. Well, this is a very promising series right here for Kenny Pickett because that ball was delivered right before the pocket collapsed. He stayed in there. He made an accurate throw. I'm still a little bit concerned about this going to the sideline to get the play every time. Here's Tipton, comes back to the football very nicely in front of John Reed. The first and goal now for the Panthers. Davis, the running back, is in the slot, empty backfield. Could be quarterback draw here. Pickett gets it out quickly, catch made, and slipping down is Davis. Means about three. You know, I think if it wouldn't have been a wet field, Davis was trying to plant and go back outside, and I think he might have been able to run to the pylon. Field gave way on him because the defender was overrunning the play. This is a linebacker guarding him, and he was overrunning the play. If he could have got his foot, of course, they both slipped on the play, but it might have been a touchdown. One of those red zone situations that decide games early on. This, this feels like an important series for the Panthers. Second and goal. Pickett looking to his left. Escapes. Back pedals. Still running. Diving out inside the five. It'll be third and goal. He does a really nice job of keeping his eyes downfield. Penn State, their initial coverage has been excellent. And he's had to leave the pocket, but he isn't leaving the pocket without still thinking about throwing the football. Eyes are downfield. The ball is still able to throw. And at the last base, says, there's nothing. I've got to make what I can. And he gets the ball inside the five-yard line. Thinking that is he's Looking at two plays to get yeah. the two plus yards well, here. Last year, the game was very close like this. They went for a fourth and three down deep and got stuffed. Now, he may want to get points this year. You got to hurry. Five seconds on the play clock. And this third and goal, they get it off. He bobbled the snap, gets it out. French in heavy traffic will have to retreat, and he'll be tackled back at the nine. Because he came to the sidelines, Todd, they didn't have a whole lot yeah. of time to get the ball snapped. Yeah, I, I think they, they need to change that operation, I think, at some point during this game. Plus, he bobbles the snap, which messed up the timing of the play. He wasn't able to get it out to French as quickly as he would have liked because French was supposed to come all the way inside after catching the football. The blocking was going to the inside, but the, pl the throw was late, and that messed up the play. So an 85-yard drive will have to settle for an attempted chip shot by Alex Kessman. 25-yarder. And he knocks it through. 
So Pickett, a sharp drive, but the Panthers stall inside the five, and the Lions still lead by four. Thanks, Cassie. That'll be win number 24 in a row for Ohio State over Indiana. Pittsburgh marched at 85 yards. Pickett, 12 of 13, also ran the ball for 15 yards, but they stall deep. Hamler's going to have a go from the goal line. He'll be knocked down at the 25-yard line. So Penn State that played in the years when you were the quarterback of this team and Pittsburgh was loaded with talent. Both teams were in the top 10 every year. Of the three years I played, there were 13 first-round draft picks that played in those games. Wow. Clifford from the pocket over the middle and over the head and the outstretched arm of Frymuth. You know, you mentioned that Penn State has not had the ball, not had that many plays, but a couple explosive plays. Same thing happened last week. You know, they only ran 20 plays in the first half against Buffalo, only 82 yards, and uh, but they kind of took over the game in the third quarter. And, you know, I think both defenses have played solid. You know, they've given up, each defense has given up a couple big plays, but for the most part, they've been pretty fundamentally sound. They had a point per play last week. Yeah. 45 points and 46 total snaps. Second and 10. Brown wrestled down right at the line of scrimmage. So a conservative second and long call yeah. sets up third and nine. And again. Brown is the back. Lions need nine on this third down. To avoid putting a defense right back on the field that was just out there for a long Pittsburgh drive. Lots of pre-snap movement in the yeah, chess match. That's a real chess match. That's the second check that Clifford has made at the line of scrimmage and the defense checking as well. Panthers bring heat. Clifford gets it out and it's incomplete. Just behind Jahan Dotson, but it was catchable. And the Lions will punt. Now again, the, the, the discipline of both defenses for the most part has been pretty impressive to me in the first half. Hit right on time with their coverage. The one time they got out of coverage, Hamler beat them for the long play down the field and they had the one long run by Journey Brown. Other than that, pretty solid first half for the pit defense. Put the focus on Hamler, but French is a dangerous return yeah. as well. Penninger gets it off. And French will let it bounce. And it will take another nice Penn State bounce. So good display by both sides in the punting department. Kickoff week two of the NFL. ESPN on ESPN app, 10 o'clock Eastern. Randy Moss going to sit down with former LSU and now Brown's teammates, Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry. Peyton Manning interviews J.J. Watt. Plus all the breaking stories right up until kickoff. In the 50th season of Monday Night Football, ESPN and ESPN Deportes, Browns and Jets. Mike Black, our spotter here, will make the short journey to New Jersey to see if uh, the Browns can get it going. That was a that was a deflating oh, opening so loss deflating. for Baker Mayfield. I live in Ohio, and I mean everybody was so pumped up for wow. it, and it was just like a giant thud. Have they jumped off the bandwagon already <laughs> after no, one game? They'll give them another couple weeks. So Pickett and the Panthers back to work after the 53-yard punt. It's a two-back look. Todd Sibley and A.J. Davis back there. Got to hurry. He snap it at one. Davis tries to get the edge, and he'll be chased down from behind by Shaka Tony. That time Pitt tried to go with a sixth offensive lineman. We talked about the tackle over formation. That time they brought in number 59. An extra defensive lineman lined him up as a tight end. A pure power running set, and but a very short gain because the Penn State defense was not fooled. Pickett's had a couple of scrambles, Todd, but the Panthers have 12 running plays for 21 net yards here. Yeah, Penn State has done a nice job of bottling up the run game. Now it's Vincent Davis, no relation to A.J., the freshman from Fort Lauderdale in the backfield. Pickett gets it out quickly, and it's right off the hands of Trey Tipton. Did you see his eyes? He just kind of turned his eyes upfield or to the sideline before he secured the catch. This was a good throw, good timing by Pickett. And Trey Tipton just took his eyes off of it the last minute. And drops have been a problem in the early season for both receiving cores. They were crucial in its opening home loss to Virginia. Third and eight. Got to be careful here if you're Kenny Pickett. You're right in the football game. You can't afford to do something to incite this Penn State team. 
They bring pressure. Pickett delivers. Flags down. Incomplete. The flag was in the defensive secondary. Yeah, probably defensive holding, which will give an automatic first down to the pit offense. Defensive holding, number 29. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's the graduate student, John Reed, the cerebral leader of that secondary. Yeah, has really played well. Right there in the slot, number 29, he's working on Maurice French, who's the go-to guy, and there it is, a, a grab with both hands. That's an easy call in the middle of the field. Reed made the electric play that ignited both the offense and the defense, the pick six against Buffalo. Yep. Penn State had been sluggish until he made that play and then took flight. Ball moved to the 34. Pick it to Vincent Davis, and the freshman spun around by Parsons, who's been active, but he got nine yards. Yeah, that was the best run play they've had by design, and it was a little draw action. They showed pass. The offensive line did a nice job with a pass set, and that's what opened up a crease in that Penn State defense. Davis quick, and she better be if you're 5'8", 170. Yeah. Parsons has picked up this season right where you left off last, all over the place, patrolling the middle. So rangy. He just has so much range as a linebacker. Looking to throw on second and two. Pickett retreats and fires. Crossing route. French shows the burst. He's got a first down into Penn State territory. That was excellent pass protection because the pressure came from Kenny Pickett's left, and it was well picked up. Watch the back. Vincent Davis pick up the blitz right there. Nice pocket for Kenny Pickett to survey the field and come to the other side and make the throw. The running backs in the Virginia game, they got picked on in, in their blitz pickup. That was a true freshman, Vincent Davis, doing a much better job protecting his quarterback there. No sacks for this Penn State front yet. Now Tipton is in the backfield. He'll motion out. Pick it back, pedals again, has protection, fires downfield, and the catch is made by Tipton that time, and the Panthers are threatening yeah. again. Nice job by Pickett. He felt a little pressure from Gross Matos to his left. He's working on the Carter Warren, the sophomore tackle. He feels that pressure, and he moves to that away from it and opens up a throwing, throwing lane to Tipton. This is a great opportunity for Pitt to work the clock all the way down here in the first half. They've got two timeouts left. You get a touchdown. You take the lead to go into halftime, potentially. We've got the football about 10 minutes more than Penn State so far. Pickett delivers. Man, wide open, caught, knocked out of bounds. Dontavius Butler Jenkins in his first and goal. Nice really nice. Throw. Yeah, and they had three receivers to that side. They had a flare out with the running back. That brought the coverage up. And it's a linebacker trying to run with that slot receiver. Excellent design by Mark Whipple, getting three receivers to the short side of the field. Playing with some tempo here on first and goal. Pickett rolls. Throw it away. Looking, and finally we'll just throw it away. Yeah. So they stalled down here inside the five last time. Yeah. Different looks they're showing near the goal line. Yeah, that, that was actually a, a really, the, the play before that was really well conceived, well designed. Again, we see Kenny Pickett coming all the way to the sideline. And on a long drive, you wonder about his fatigue. If he needs to run or if he needs to extend the play, running back and forth to get the play call seems a little bit added on. Holly was reporting he looks tired. Yeah. It's especially a long run when you're down here close to the goal line. Vincent Davis is the back. Good place for a quarterback draw, though. Davis tries to bounce it, makes a cut, and is spun into the end zone. So the freshman and the Panthers take the lead a long march. Excellent drive and a hard nose run by Davis. I think that was Micah Parsons that had him wrapped up, and he's able to just kind of run him into the end zone. Nice blocking on the play side of the attack. And here's Micah Parsons, the best tackler on the Penn State team. And he's able to kind of run through that arm into the end zone. It's 170 pounder who finds the end zone. And the Panthers move it 78 yards in eight plays to take the lead. We wondered how would this team respond after falling behind on the road very well so far. He has the lead. And Penn State has two away to work with before halftime. Hamler's going to give it a go, bring it out from two yards deep. And he is swarmed under, and Penn State will have to start from the 14-yard line. I guess we didn't give you much time to answer it. <laughs> Big Ten fans might have gotten this. 
Minnesota and Wisconsin meeting 128 as there's some a Hamler's scuffle down. on the field. Hamler, Hamler's down still on the field. So Hamler returned the kickoff. He's still down, and Penn State players gathered around, and there was a little scuffle. Well, I He's think limping. the kicker was involved in the scuffle, whatever it was. It's they land on play. his legs. And no, no yeah. dirty tackle there. I think it's kind of a foot to the face mask. Yeah. Unintentionally. Yeah, I'm not sure what the what the scuffle was about. Well, there was a little action by Pine, number 36. But the more the more pressing concern for Penn State is the health or the status of KJ Hamler. And Journey Brown has started a tailback. He took a big shot. He was the yeah. man trying to block for Hamler in front. So now Penn State just their 20th play of this first half and they find themselves down by a field goal and Sean Clifford has been under duress most of the first half delivers incomplete across the middle try to get it to Mike Hippenhammer Holly guys KJ Hamler came to the right sideline here he's standing right next to me and he stretched out that right knee he looked at the trainers he said he's OK took some water and he's jogging back out on the field as we speak good news meanwhile Clifford was knocked down again, again. Yeah, they've gotten in there and they've really done a good job of rushing him, making him uncomfortable. He's three for 10. And again, this is the first real adversity that he's faced as a starting quarterback for Penn State. It was all terribly easy against Idaho. He struggled in the first half against Buffalo, but got it going. But nothing like this. Clifford now tries to escape the pocket. And boy, Todd, you can tell his, his eyes are going up yep. field very quickly because of the pressure. Yep. Well, what happens is ideally you want a quarterback to see downfield and feel the rush. But when you get knocked around, you start looking for the rush, especially a young quarterback. That was the very athletic Jalen Twyman. He's been a pass rush force so far in the young season. And Clifford, with all that pressure, has missed on his last five attempts. Yeah. And it's really a lot of some blitz, but a lot of it has just been four man rush. They're just whipping the guys up front. Phil Campbell, this was a blitz that came to the blind side of Sean Clifford. Didn't see it, knocked the ball loose. Penn State to recover. This time on third down again, they get more exotic on third down, a little corner pressure, but you see hits on the quarterback. Even with completions, there's a lot of hits on the quarterback in the first half of this game, and that takes its toll. And for a young guy like Sean Clifford, as we saw in the last play, you start looking to find out where those bodies are coming from. You thought if there was a question mark on this Penn State offense, it wasn't necessarily Clifford, but the guys up front. Yeah, I, I was not sold that the offensive line was, was a real solid, dependable unit, even what I saw against them against Buffalo last week. And the problems, I think, continue a little bit in this one. And Penn State, unless they can pick up eight yards, will punt. Back to Pittsburgh yet again, and the Panthers a chance to try to add to this lead before halftime. Clifford has protection this time and delivers across the middle, and it's Slade out of the backfield. Ricky Slade racing into Pittsburgh territory. It's the third big explosive play from this offense. Great call, getting the back out. He's isolated on a linebacker, and you're going to see the linebacker slip. The linebacker in coverage and man to man. It's a four man rush. Watch the linebacker slip. Slade goes right inside of him and Clifford finds him. He got 40 yards playing fast. Clifford now downfield shot looping the ball. And it's incomplete over the head of Jahan Dotson. So they take a shot downfield for the first time. Yeah. And a good idea, you know, because Pitt is going to play man coverage, man press coverage with their corners the majority of the game. That's their style. That's what Pat Marduzzi did when he was at Michigan State. Defensive coordinator Randy Bates, same idea, same philosophy. So you've got to take some shots downfield against one on one coverage. But you've got to have some protection to throw the football down the field. Dobson's a guy who can win on the edge. Yep. Great ability to adjust to the ball in the air. Sophomore is going to be counted on be a big part of this offense. Panthers crowd the line, bring some pressure. Clifford has time though and delivers a short throw incomplete. Ball knocked out of the hands of the receiver by Paris Ford. Yeah, perfect timing by Paris Ford. This is a good throw. The protection was good. Paris Ford just did a nice job of timing the hit on Hippenhammer right there, knocks the ball loose. Ford undersized for the safety position but plays with great energy and he is a guy that provides the juice for this defense thought he might have the assignment of covering 
Fryermuth a lot today. Yeah. Now here's Hamler right here. This is the guy they're going to probably look for, and you got Fryermuth right here. Those are the two guys on this third down play. They need ten. Clifford blitz comes, gets it out. Catch made by Hamler. He stretches and fights. He'll be marked about a yard short. Mathis stopped him. It's fourth down. Clock running. Penn State has the three timeouts. Well, I think James is probably going to think here for a minute. He's got the timeouts. He's got time. And it looks like up. they're going for it right away. Slate is the back. He's got the football. He's got the first down. So the clock will stop to move the sticks. Now you use it one of those timeouts. Since you got three of them, you can use one. The clock does stop while they move the chains, but you got three. Choose not to use one, and the clock restarts. Play action. Clifford hit as he throws, loops into the end zone, and it's over the head of Justin Shorter. So they let time run down. Still got the three timeouts, and there's still some jawing going on. Yeah. That was good coverage by Damari Mathis, number 21. He was stride for stride. He's got to be careful. I don't think the officials saw what happened after the players. They were running back. Took yeah. a swipe at him. Yeah, you're right. Brown just saw that. Second and ten. Slade has to get to the edge. Shows some speed. Tackle inbounds. Now they'll have to use a timeout. Yeah, really good play. Stalker by, stopped yeah, him. Yeah, really good play by Jazzy Stalker. I mean, that's a hard ask for a safety running all the way to the sideline, making a one-on-one -on -one tackle. That was well done. First charge for this half. Interesting game. After all the, the weather delay, Penn State starts fast, Todd. You wonder how is Pitt going to respond? They yeah. haven't really responded well to adversity that much in the first couple of games. Yeah. They answer with two long drives. Yeah, the very impressive drive. And now we've got an impressive answer by Penn State, who is pretty much neutralized other than a couple big plays in the first half. They have a chance if they score to not only take the lead, they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. So a chance to really swing the momentum of the game right here for Penn State. Not the way that Clifford envisioned this first half going. Yeah. And for Pickett, his counterpart, a rough start. But then he got he got sharp when they called some high percentage throws for him. He's got to be taking some confidence into the second half. Yeah, absolutely. He had a good, solid first half. And Sean Clifford starting to make a couple plays in, in this part, the latter part of the first half. Numbers don't necessarily show, but this drive has been a good one for Sean Clifford. You know, plays at 85, 53, and 40 yards. And again, this formation now, you've got Fryermuth and Hamler both on the same side. To the top of the screen, to the wide side of the field. Jerry Brown is the back. He picks up the blitz, but they swarm Clifford and drop him. Jalen Twyman from the inside makes a huge play and pushes Penn State back out of field goal range. They move Twyman right over the center, Michael Minette. And that's a hard, hard job. Your best pass rusher right over the center. He whips him right away with a quick move to the inside. And when that pressure comes right up inside, it's really, really tough for a quarterback. That is their second charge. Penn State with seven seconds to go. Spends timeout. the timeout. The pass rush of the Panthers has been impressive today. It has been. It has been. I mean, it's been a mixture of blitz and pressure from the outside and just a four-man rush, and those guys have gotten after it. And that time, you saw them take their best pass rushing internal lineman, Twyman, line him up over the center. And that's hard for a guy to snap the football and block the best pass rusher right over your nose. Twyman Usually. comes from D.C., very yeah. tough background. He's come through a lot in his young oh, life. He's made a huge improvement as a football player. And with Rashawn Weaver, Keyshawn Camp, both out for the year with knee injuries, they needed him to step up, and he yeah, has. He has. He's answered the call. Well, they're going to try a long field goal. And this is Jordan Stout, the kickoff man, who's made a 53-yarder. Earlier this season, the young man who came over from Virginia Tech. This is from 57. This is right on the very edge of his field goal range. And as they try to salvage three from the drive and tie the game at the break. Panthers have a man standing at the end line to perhaps return it if it's short. This would be a school record. Drives it. Right through. 
Jordan Stout, a specialist at that, breaks a school record and we'll send it to the locker room at 10 apiece. Wow. Well, James Franklin told us we got one kicker that's our 49 and in guy. We got another guy who's our 50 and above guy. And Stout, the long leg guy, drives one through right at the buzzer. Excuse me for saying out of field goal range with a sack. <laughs> we didn't think he could boot it that wow. far. And they wouldn't have tried it if it wasn't an end of half or end yeah. of game situation. But that will give the coach confidence he and the kicker. It. And again, they get the ball to start the third quarter. They'll have confidence and momentum going into the locker room. They've got to make some adjustments to their protection. But they'll get the ball to start. A 53 yarder against Idaho was the longest field goal here in six years. Now he's broken the school record. So 10 10 interesting back and forth first half. The State Farm Halftime Report, just a second away, Kevin Nagandi, Jonathan Vilma, and Mark Sanchez. These guys get extra duty during the weather delay. Yeah. They can update us on what's going on in this early window. Ohio State continues to dominate Indiana, 30 to 10 in Bloomington. So 11 plays, 48 yards, as Penn State does a nice job of answering. Couldn't ask for anything better in the 100th matchup of Pitt, no. Penn State, could we? Stout, just a beautiful technique in these long range kicks. Drives it over the end line. And you see the Panthers take a knee. So I would think, Todd, both offensive staffs will go in and, and have conversations. You know, Pittsburgh. Letting Pickett throw the ball in early downs really turned things yeah. around. They haven't been able to run the ball. And for Penn State, you'd think the offensive line would be circled up. Yeah. So what can we do to improve the pass pro? Absolutely. I think that's the main issue for Penn State. We've got to do a better job protecting our quarterback. For Mark Whipple in the pit offense, we've got to find some better opportunities to run the football. We can't have Kenny Pickett throw it every down in the second half. We've got to have some balance. But he's got to be happy with their press pass protection against this vaunted Penn State defensive front. So Pat Narduzzi's team did respond to the early Penn State touchdown and he's with Holly Rowe. Well coach your defensive front has been able to get some real pressure on Sean Clifford for Penn State. What's been the most effective up front. You know our kids are playing hard when we call some blitz they're going like wild which is one of our keys to victory. You know our defense played a good job. We give you know two big plays which is, is you know can't happen at least a point. You've let Pickett throw early in the downs. How has that been effective for you passing? It's been good. Kenny's played well. Uh, you know, I'm happy with where, right, where he is right now, and it's only going to get better. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, in the second half, will decide it. Stats pretty even in terms of total field goal by Jordan Stout. Tied things up, and the Lions will get the football to begin the third quarter. And you would presume, Todd, after some conversations about protecting Sean Clifford, which has been a real problem. Yeah. Yeah I think they've got to do a better job and if that means they've got to keep some guys in to help and do a little bit more max protection then so be it. But they got to keep him a little cleaner in the second half. Hamler with a running start from the goal line. And they've done an excellent job containing the dangerous return man for Penn State so far. Well which defensive line could affect the other team's quarterback. We wondered yeah. going in maybe you'd think on paper Penn State would have the edge exact opposite in the first half. Yeah and you know Penn State last week against Buffalo Buffalo did a great job of chipping their defensive ends and keeping extra bodies in and, and Pitt hasn't had to do that. They've just blocked those guys. Meanwhile the Penn State offensive line has had their hands full with this defensive front and some real timely blitzing also called by Randy Bates the defensive coordinator. We'll see if Sean Clifford can get some protection and get comfortable. It was a rough first half for the Penn State quarterback. Six of 16. And they hand it off to Journey Brown, who had that 85 yard romp, making his first start. Holly Rowe moments ago with James Franklin. You've been good at the explosive plays, but converting on third down, what can you do better there? Well, I think that the story in the game so far is their quarterback is comfortable in their pocket, and our quarterback's getting hit too often. That's the story of the game. It shows up on third down, it shows up on every down. So what do you ask your offensive line to change? Yeah, and to be honest with you, it's more of our defensive line getting to their quarterback. Our quarterback's doing a good job battling there. They're bringing pressure. We got to get the ball out of his hands on offense a little more. They got it out to Hamler, who made a terrific hands catch on a low throw. Yeah, it wasn't a great throw, but it was a quick throw. Getting out of Clifford's hands, got a first down, new set of downs. Third catch for Hamler. He's been targeted five times. Play action. And Clifford. Takes a downfield shot and trying to get the ball to Dotson in single coverage against Pinnock. 
Another good job by Pinnock. He's a big physical corner. I, I, I we saw the the defensive backs as they were warming up before the game. They're a good looking group. They're a physical looking group. Can't do it any better. If you're a press man corner, that's perfect. You get in the receiver's hip pocket. You use the sideline to your advantage, and you make a play on the football. One of 85 passes of 53 and 40, but the other 29 plays, Todd, less than two yards per play. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Last week they won with big plays in the third quarter and uh, if you have enough of them that could be enough. It's a second and ten run and Brown wrestled down by Jalen Twyman who's having a nice afternoon. And we knew that this was going to be the truest test of Penn State. Throw the Idaho game out. That was a mismatch. Buffalo is a good Mac team and the but in the third quarter Penn State realized our guys are better than their guys and they took it to control the game. This is a much more evenly matched game. And Pitt is a has been a much firmer test so far for this Penn State offense. Last year's meeting became a blowout when Penn State pulled away big time in the second half, scored 37 after halftime. Need eight on third down. Pressure again. Clifford has to scramble. Now backpedals and tries to heave it downfield into heavy traffic. Jump ball. Catch made. Dan Chazetta. The track sprinter just went up and won a battle and Penn State set up inside the 15. What a play by Chazena, but credit Sean Clifford also because he is going to get tattooed on this play. He almost gets sacked in the pocket. He gets out. He knows he's going to get hit. He still loads up and launches. And watch Chazena just box out the guy like a basketball rebounder and go up for the football. They're reviewing this play, but it seems pretty clear upon first look that the oh. ball was collected. I don't think it ever I did it touch. The ground. The, you do need to hit yeah. the ground? Did Very he close. control it all the way to the ground is going to be the issue. To send a guy who's known more for his speed than his ability to win on the edge. Close look at the football here. He's bobbling it now. Does it touch the ground? Oh, yeah, it bounces off the, the ground. Point right of the ground there, will bring in Bill Lamagne. This is a Big Ten replay crew, ACC guys on the field. Bill, what do you see? Well, initially he did have control of the ball, but it squeezed through his arm, and as he hit the ground, the tip of the ball hits the ground. He does not have control, maintaining control, going to the ground. Easy to see when you blow pass. it up there. Yeah, yeah exactly. This will be reversed, incomplete pass. What an effort, though. I mean, he, he boxed his man out like a rebounder in basketball, went up and high-pointed the football, and almost came down with an incredible catch. He's standing next to James Franklin as they're watching on the big screen. They may not like what they see. And remember, it was ruled a catch, so it has to be overwhelming evidence for the officials to overturn the call, but... Yeah, I think you can see it there. The yeah. ball hits on the point and it bounces hits and bounces up. right back up. That's the indisputable video evidence you need. You yeah. hit it right on the head, Todd. Here's the verdict from Riley Johnson. After reviewing the play, when the receiver had the hand on the ball, the ball went through and hit the ground. Therefore, the pass is incomplete. Would have been a spectacular first career catch for Chisena. It takes off the gain that had moved the ball inside the 15. Wow. Now it's fourth and eight. What a turnaround. So Penn State to punt instead of running plays from the red zone. And once again, Clifford under duress as he delivered a pass. Well, that time he had to leave the pocket. And, uh, he was a, a moving target out there, but he still made a gutsy throw. French. And he's 21. Gillikin gets a high punt away. And French with two F's. Says he has no idea why. <laughs> he wanted to change it. His mom said, no, I don't care if you get bothered by the kids. You're keeping F with two F's at the beginning. A Pacific Life game summary here. Well, Kenny Pickett off to a little slow start. Then he got hot. This was the drive that led to their Go ahead, touchdown at the time, but Kenny Pickett, 18 to 23, and on the other side of the coin, led by Jalen Twyman, this Pitt's defensive front and their front seven with constant pressure on Sean Clifford. Three sacks and a whole bunch of hits in that first half. Pittsburgh's been all about the short passing game. They've averaged just two yards per rushing attempt today. A.J. Davis and Micah Parsons is having a tremendous game. Six tackles in the first half. That's his second tackle for loss today. 
Yeah, he just ran right inside the tight end, Griffin Stewart. Watch him right here. I mean, this guy's here to block him, and you see the quickness of Micah Parsons. He just jumps right inside the tight end and makes the play. I thought it was interesting. Brent Pry said, we need him to improve. We just asked him, do what we ask you to do the first three steps, and then your instincts can take over. No disputing his instincts. On second and long, a screen into heavy traffic and no gain as Parsons is involved again. Well, he just, again, he knows, he reads things very quickly. He's a very smart football player. I mean, he understands what's going on out there. Sometimes he just gets a little too carried away with his instincts, but that time, first two plays of this possession, right where he's supposed to be. Instincts and physically, he's one of the true freaks in college yes, football. No doubt. Combination of speed and power in the weight room. Third and ten. Lions bring pressure. Pickett steps up. Downfield shot in a double coverage, and it's incomplete. He's trying to find a flag. Yeah, French is pleading for a flag, and finally, very late, he a flag does come out. He couldn't get it out of his pants. Oh, okay. I mean, he was reaching for a long time to throw the flag. So it wasn't he the lobbying effort no, then. Okay. He couldn't get it out. John Reed was in coverage. Defensive pass interference, number 38. Well, they got they got Lamont Wade the safety. It was a defensive holding earlier in the game on yeah. Reed that prolonged the Pittsburgh scoring drive. Yeah, Lamont Wade is the safety that's going to come over the top and help John Reed. Here he comes over the top. Actually, yeah, I, I think it is Reed. 29. Yeah, yeah. that's got to be on 29, not 38. There was a jersey grab earlier, then he kind of shoves French to the ground. So the second penalty on the graduate student. And Pittsburgh from the 34 with a fresh set of downs. Pickett gets it out quickly, incomplete, off the hands of Tipton. He was pressured off the edge there by Castro Fields on the corner blitz. Now see, that's that tackle over. They took their left tackle, Carter Warren, and put him as a tight end on the right side. You're thinking run, right? And they threw a drop back pass on first down. Good concept, just not able to make the completion. I'm enjoying the chess match, the pass rush versus the pass pro. It's been a little exotic. Penn State trying to find ways to affect the quarterback. Haven't sacked him yet. Second and ten. They bring pressure again. The ball is out quickly, and again, nothing after the catch right. for Aaron Matthews. Garrett Taylor stopped him. Yeah, again, I, I think Penn State, I've been very impressed with Penn State tackling in the open field. Now, part of that is we know they're athletic, we know they're fast, but but once you get there, you still got to get them on the ground, and they're doing a nice job of tackling in space. And we have seen so many missed tackles. Always a feature at the beginning of yes, seasons, absolutely. but it's been epidemic so far. Third and eight. Students as loud as they've been all day beginning to feel like a regular game now after the delayed start. Rag the tight end in the backfield. Pick it. Hit as he throws. It's a low throw incomplete. Tried to get the ball to Mac. It's fourth down and Micah Parsons was pressuring him. Yeah, they brought Parsons from the outside. He went right around the running back. It's a pretty good throw. The only thing Mac needs to, instead of bending that and drifting out, he's got to come back towards the football on the sideline. Pickett does a nice job of stepping up and buying a little bit of time, but his receiver didn't help him with the way he ended that route. KJ Hamler at his 25. Chris Tadulu punching very well in the first half. High boot. KJ drifting back and he'll retreat all the way to the 12 to make a fair catch. That's where Penn State will start. 52 yard punt.
Penn State takes over, pin back. So he's trying to create another explosive play. It's really been about three plays for this yeah. offense. Yeah. Noah Kane, true freshman. Baton Rouge, part of this four-back rotation. Journey Brown got the start. He's made the big play in the first half that set up a touchdown. But rushing yards have not been that easy to come by outside of that play today. And that's a real credit to this pit defense being Randy Bates defensive coordinator. Play action get the ball out catch made far side and that's Jahan Dotson. They tried to target him downfield a couple of times that short throw produces a yeah. first down. Yeah the play action opened it up and it was a nice read by Clifford get the ball out quick. You mentioned the, the, the defensive staff for Pitt again they're working without their two best defensive linemen. Randy Bates right here. Two best defensive linemen that both hurt their knees early in the season and their so their depth is obviously affected and they are playing lights out today. There's a first down run being knocked down after a short gain is Kane. Randy Bates came from Northwestern so yeah. he's very familiar with this Penn State attack. Yeah and very familiar with Pat Narduzzi going against him at Michigan State. I mean they've been friends for a long time and also again yeah you're right very familiar with Penn State's offense. There's the squadron of dudes in red hats <laughs> signaling in on the defensive side. Yeah the offense should borrow one of those guys. on offense though. <laughs> They dump it in the flat. Kane shows a burst, and Noah Kane a chance to make a play. Early in Rowley, four-star recruit. Yeah. Cousins Michael Clayton, who was a great wide receiver for LSU and also in the NFL. 13-yard gain, first down at the 40. Good quick throws so far in this possession here by Sean Clifford. Yeah, he's thankful for that. Let's adjust to that pass rush. Now Clifford looks like he's going to keep it and under through Hamler who was running free. So it's yeah. a deception and they had him. They had him but that's a hard throw Chris. I mean he is he's showing run. He's moving to his right. He's trying to throw it back across his body to the fastest guy on this team wide receiver that that's a very difficult throw to make with accuracy. Set your feet if he stops and sets his feet he maybe has a better shot at it. Kane is still the back on second and ten. Panthers bring pressure. Clifford gets the ball out. High throw. Dotson makes the catch. And he's got a first down into Pittsburgh territory. Really nice throw by Clifford. This is from the left hash all the way to the right sideline. Dotson's working on the safety. DeMar Hamlin in the slot. Watch this throw on a line. Left hash mark to right sideline. And a nice catch by Dotson. Kane makes a cut and really ran into the official Harris Ford stopped him but that quick run picks up close to first down yardage really nice block by the center Michael Manette who was hit there in the middle linebacker Kylan Johnson really opened that play up second and short. Kane again he's kind of slippery he's trying to show his leg power to first out of the 31. It's a good drive now and it, it's a good mix of run and short pass. And this offensive line that had a rough first half really starting to impose their will a little bit on this drive particularly running the football. You'll have fresh legs when you rotate backs but difficult Todd as a back to get any kind of rhythm yeah, when there's right. this deeper rotation. They hope to settle like on one or two guys. Yeah. And in the meantime if they feel like somebody really has a hot hand they're going to ride that and they're going to go with that guy and kind of break their rotation but they haven't had that yet. Kane still in there they fake it to him Clifford from the pocket launches one for the end zone. Hamler's the attended receiver there were a couple of two guys there. Yeah two receivers and two DBs. Stalker was yeah. in coverage. Well because there were two receivers there there were two <laughs> DBs but it was Fryermuth and Hamler that were there together and that that can't be the way it was designed. But they go to the same spot that's why this ball was almost intercepted because you have two white shirts there. And Jazzy Stalker almost comes away with the football. It's happened a couple times this season where receivers ended up right next to each other downfield. Second down. Clifford takes off. 
Stiff arm makes a man miss. And the guy who has worked so hard in the weight room to improve his speed. He was a 4-8-40 guy when he got here. And now he's run a 4-5-3. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, that is an incredible improvement. Had a 58-yard run last week and uh, does a nice job here. Now that, wow. Took a shot from Paris yeah. Ford helmet to helmet. No flag. It's third and four. Clifford immediately pressured, slips out, and delivers. Complete. Nice and it's Sullivan play. Brown who's got a first hand inside the 20. Really nice play by Sean Clifford. We saw earlier in the first half when he felt that rush, his eyes went down to the defenders. This time, feels the rush, moves, but his eyes stay downfield. That's why he's able to spot the open receiver, flip it to him for the first down. Friermuth has not been a weapon They've used often. They've targeted him a couple times, just one catch. Panthers have done a good job on the tight end. And this is the part of the field that you would expect him to go. I mean, he's that big target in the middle of the field. Timeout. Pittsburgh. Panthers been a defensive timeout with the Lions threatening midway third quarter. NFL Prime Time is back on Sunday nights, marrying exclusively on ESPN Plus at 7.30 p.m. Eastern all season long. College football on ABC is brought to you by the all-new Ford Explorer, built Ford Proud. NFL Prime Time is back on Sunday nights, marrying exclusively on ESPN Plus at 7.30 p.m. Eastern all season long. College football on ABC is brought to you by the all-new Ford Explorer, built Ford Proud. Todd, you and Marino get along okay when you guys were on the opposite side of this rivalry? Yeah, we did. You know, it's not like it is today where guys know each other, they see each other at camps or different things. We didn't really have a whole lot of interaction, interaction but we hung out a few times. And I'll tell you, when he retired from the Dolphins, the Dolphins put on a nice party and they invited all the guys who were drafted in the first round in the 83 class down there for a couple days. That was a really special thing to be a part of. No doubt. After the timeout by the Panthers, the Indian Lions have a First and ten, and they hand it off short. It's been Noah Kane's drive so far. Yeah. Phil Campbell stopped him. And this has been a excellent offensive uh, drive for the Penn State offensive line. The, the best they've played, they've controlled the line of scrimmage this drive, and it's been a very good blend of run and pass. Yeah, six plays, run, six pass. Thirteenth play of the drive coming up, second and six. Kane again with the burst and a touchdown. Noah Kane is the hot hand. And he's the workhorse on that drive as the Lions take it 88 yards to reclaim the lead. A couple really good blocks here. You're going to see on this touchdown the right guard, C.J. Thorpe, and the center right here going to open up the gap on the inside. 
Right off those blocks, really nice vision in the hole by Noah Kane. And a touchdown for Penn State. There's no Baton Rouge to State College pipeline. They don't get too many guys, four star caliber, out of that part of the country. But Kane gets his chance as a true freshman and has an awesome drive. Courage there by Journey Brown, who was the starter today. That's great yeah. to see. That's Ricky Slade, too. That's all yep. those backs that are sharing the ball, encouraging they're all, one They're another. all good buddies, which yeah. they better be when yep. they're having to share the rock as much as they do. Extra yard for Teachers Week, an annual celebration led by the College Football Playoff Foundation. It honors great teachers across the country. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard or search the hashtag Extra Yard Week. So Kane. Caps it off with a touchdown, carried six times for 40 yards and caught a pass for 13 yeah. more in the drive. Great drive for him. Penn State's offensive line, as you pointed out, after a, a talking to and some adjustments, much yeah. better performance in that possession. Much better. Matt Limegrover, the offensive line coach, got his guys on the right page. And uh, again, it was quick throws, but it was the success running the football that really opened things up for him. Rain has begun to fall. Folks here have put on the rain gear, but the fourth separate time today. <laughs> so another opportunity for Pittsburgh to show resilience. They did in the first half after falling behind by seven, find themselves down by seven again. An intent not to let Penn State dominate after halftime, which is what happened in last yes. year's meeting, which became a blowout, one of the biggest in the history of this series. To Holly Rowe. Well, you talked about extra yard for teacher. One teacher that has gone the extra yard for Penn State linebacker Micah Parsons is Martha Sherman. She is a professor here in criminology, and he said, that is my home girl. And he was having trouble with a full semester long project, and he said, she was there for me. I would text her. I would go to her office. Every extra bit of help I needed, she was there. He was doing a long project on wealth and education with independent and dependent variables. He said the algorithm was giving me problems, but Martha, his home girl, was there for her, there for him. Extra yard. I love that he said she was the extra yard for his Well done, Professor Sherman. Thanks, Holly. Crowd is loud now as the Panthers take over. And it's an end around handoff to Shockey Jacques Louis, guy who's been hampered by injuries the last couple of games, but he's a Young playmaker. Yeah, he's got speed, and uh, we haven't seen that kind of jet sweep action yet in the ball game. A little different way to create some running space, and they ran away from Micah Parsons. And what we see right now in the second half, the adjustment Brent Fry is making, uh, Fry is making, is Micah Parsons is going to be more involved in rushing the passer. Jet sweeps so much a part of this Panther yeah. offense in recent years, less so under Whipple. But a nine yard gain there and now A.J. Davis will move the sticks to the 36. One of the reasons I think we're going to see more of Micah Parsons rushing is because the area of weakness that I saw in the pit offense against Virginia when the pressure came was their running backs picking up linebackers and safeties. They just weren't consistent in blocking those guys and the offensive line's doing a nice job but the backs need to be challenged. Pickett straight back, delivers underneath, and the catch is made. They dump it off to Nikia Griffin-Stewart, the transfer from Rutgers. They, they haven't gotten the tight ends as involved yet this season as they hope to. Yeah, I think they think Nik Nikia Griffin-Stewart can be that guy. I think they think he can be a real valuable asset to their offense. Has not played a whole lot yet, but they feel like he's the guy that can, can kind of open up the middle of the field for them. They see here Mack, number 11, I think needs to be more involved in what they're doing also. He's up here at the top of the screen. He's a bona fide difference maker at receiver for them. Pickett chased, flushed, and sat behind the line as Jan Johnson, the middle backer, came on the blitz. See, I think this is the recipe. They're, they're going to overload a little bit and come after the quarterback. So they bring Johnson here, and Cam Brown comes inside. Both linebackers are bringing pressure. And Jan Johnson able to chase down Pickett on the backside. First sack of the afternoon for the Lions. And it sets up a third and 12. Pickett flushed again and knocked down again. Flipped it at the last second. And the Panthers almost gain a first down on the improvisation. Will Greg, the tight end, grab yeah. the desperation heave? Yeah, Greg was in there as a pass protector. 
And uh, at the last minute before he went to the ground, Pickett is there to, to kind of flip him the football. See, Greg's in there just to help on the protection. The pocket breaks down, may have been down before he flipped the football. And we'll stop to take a look at it. Let's see, it's okay if his arm goes down, if the elbow goes down, or any other part of the body besides the hand or foot, he would be down. Well, it's going to be fourth down regardless of the of the call. And I don't think Pat Narduzzi is in a situation where he would consider going for it at this point anyway. You two are gross monos, the fine pass rusher for Penn State, all Big Ten defensive end was slow to get up. Looks to be okay though. They've done a nice job on him. They've kind of kept him quiet in the ballgame. That's why we're seeing more linebacker pressure uh, to try to get some heat on Kenny Pickett. They let the play stand, but as you said, still fourth down and four. Chris Tadulu has been busy and very good. And now they're going to stop things after all. I, I assume when they let him run the play, they had already checked it. Let's take another look. Was the knee down before he got it out? I think that little. It's very close. We'll take a break. After reviewing the play, Rona was down before he pitched the ball at the 32-yard line. The ball will be brought back to the 32, or down. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 3.33 and start it on my signal. Is he okay? Wobbly? Okay. After replay review, Pickett was ruled down before he flipped the ball out to Greg. So, sacks for the Penn State defense on consecutive plays after not having yeah. any coming into that. Yeah, linebacker pressure. And, and right here, I think Pitt needs to have great integrity on their punt protection because Penn State's blocked three kicks this year. Joe Lorig, the new special teams coach, good chance to go after him right here. Well, Gross Montes was involved in the tackle. We'll get a report on him as he appeared to be wobbly coming off. He, his head ran into the elbow of his teammate John Reed. No catch made at the 30 yard line. Yeah, that's a, that's a, of, of a lot of interest to Penn State. I mean, he's been quiet today, but he's the leader of their defensive front. He's in the athletic trainer's tent being looked at. Penn State, meanwhile, gets the stop they needed, finally getting some pressure on Pickett and gets the football back up by seven. And 
Pittsburgh's defense here needs to show some resolve. They cannot lose contact in this game. That's what happened last year. Penn State with two backs in the backfield this time. And Slade motioning out to give the ball to Journey Brown, who muscles for about three. That last possession that Penn State had the football was the best by far that they've run the football really in the last two weeks. I mean, even against Buffalo, they struggled to run the football. That last drive, uh, they, they really made some headway with their run game. 78 rushing yards against a good Buffalo defense. Most of those came on a scramble by Clifford. It's Brown in motions out. They get the ball to him in a flat. They get a block. And Journey Brown is off and running near midfield. Nice block there by Fryermuth. Yeah, really nice by Fryermuth. It's just an easy throw for the quarterback. Get your tight end out there. This is almost like a run play. It goes down as a pass, but it's like a run. Get him out there in space and get a lead blocker in front of him. Fryermuth with an excellent block on Cam Bright. Turns a short gain into a or short throw into a nice gain. And Slade in motion that way. Clifford straight back with a downfield look. It's Hamler on the streak, and it's just overthrown. Yeah. They're trying to go after Jason Pinnock, but they haven't beat him yet. No, and there's been a few overthrows, and Pinnock is in good position, and it's going to take a perfect throw to beat him, but I like the challenge. I, I really do. Even though Sean Clifford's numbers are not what he wants them to be, 12 of 27, you have to take those kind of shots. You have to make this defense that likes to squeeze the line of scrimmage respect the deep ball. We'll see what they can do on this second down play to avoid a third and long. Slade slips a tackle and spins into Pittsburgh territory. Wrestled down by Hamlin. So it'll be third down and about seven. When we look at Pat Fryer move, we talked about his nice block there, but only one catch for 16 yards so far in the football game. A little frustrated. Yeah. Done a good job on him. All Penn State opponents have to account for number 87. Guy who comes from Massachusetts and wears Gronk's number. Not by his choice. They just <laughs> handed it to him when he got here. That worked out perfect. He didn't object. Well, he, neither he or Hamler on the field here. In third and seven, they try to run the ball, and Slade runs right into heavy traffic, and he'll lose a yard, and the punt team comes out. Island Johnson on the stop. Interesting that they had two playmakers off yeah. the field there. And ran the football. I, I'm a little surprised by that. I think that was a little bit of a conservative call. You've got Pitt a little bit on their heels right now. Their offense didn't get going the last possession. You scored on your last possession, and that's a very conservative call at midfield. Field position call, perhaps. Gillikin under some pressure. Able to get the kick away and the fair catch. No, French did not make a fair catch. Could have and has spun down immediately. That's so excellent special teams coverage there by Jonathan Sutherland. Yeah, really good. We urge you to help people affected by Hurricane Dorian by donating to the Red Cross. Recovery efforts in the United States and in the Bahamas, which was just devastated. Go to www.redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate now. 70,000 people in the Bahamas left homeless. Well, we talked about the problems that Penn State was having running the football until the last couple possessions. Pitt, even more trouble. Only 33 yards rushing. So Final minute now of the third quarter, Todd. Yeah. Vincent Davis, true freshman back in the game. Jockey Jacques Louis now comes in motion. And it's Davis immediately runs into trouble. Shane Simmons, one of the defensive ends, who provides depth up there, clogged the middle. Just really good defense. I'll tell you what, the reason they're not running the football at all is the defensive tackles are controlling things up there. I mean, when you, right now they've got. Uh, Robert Windsor in there or Antonio Shelton in there and Fred Hansard in there number 53 and those guys are just those, those tackles are eating everything up on the inside yard and a half per rush for Pittsburgh Pickett under pressure scrambling around fires dangerously to taste here Mack who takes a huge shot from Castro Fields uh, we're just seeing a different looking Penn State defense they're much more aggressive rushing the quarterback they're getting pressure on Kenny Pickett. They're making him uncomfortable. And then they're flying to the football. We've seen the speed on the perimeter and the tackling most of the first half. 
That's a nice play. Penn State up by seven. The 100th meeting of these two rivals. Presentation will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Panthers are backed up as we begin the fourth quarter with a third and 11. Loudest part of the stadium. Pittsburgh's offense stymied in that third quarter, just eight total yards. Pickett flushed, fires underneath. A.J. Davis makes a man miss, slipping tackles and out across the 30. That's the only thing that they've been able to do on third down, the same thing. It was the, it was the screen against the blitz. You can see Lamont Wade come on the blitz, and they ran the screen right to the area that he left. It's zone defense behind. That's why there was some space and a nice call by Mark Whipple and they executed the screen on third and long beautifully for the second time in the ball game. Yeah, they got 23 yards. That was important to try to get this offense going. Stop the momentum from the pocket. A low throw incomplete. Holly. Well, guys, Penn State doesn't reveal injuries, but what I've observed here on the sideline, Peter Gross Matos is getting ready to re-enter this game after a lengthy exam in the athletic trainer's injury tent. He's got his helmet back on. He just walked up to the signal guy like, hey, I'm ready to go back in any moment. Journey Brown also uh, examined for a left knee injury. Thanks, Holly. Good news about Gross Matos. Yeah. The late handoff oh. is smothered in the backfield. Flying in was Ellis Brooks, a backup middle linebacker. Ellis, Ellis Brooks was coming on a blitz. So if it was a pass, he was going to rush the quarterback, but he just decided to eat up the ball carrier on his way to the quarterback. Right into the hole, sees it's a run, 
and says, I'll just go ahead and make the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Thank you very much. Royce Matos, the pass rusher in the game, and as the Panthers need 15. And I'll bet they keep a close eye on the back out of the backfield yes. this time. I think so. I think they'll come after him this time. Last time was a three man rush with his own. Pickett does have time. Steps up and delivers a strike, and it's French who's got first down yardage. Again, wow. they convert on third and long. It's a nice throw, and there's a little bit of a. Yeah, it was Shaka Tony and Carter Warren after the play, blocking, Warren blocking on Shaka Tony, and a uh, little extracurricular after the play, but a nice job of protecting the quarterback. Pittsburgh Todd has converted third and 11 and third yeah, and 15. That? They got 16 yards on that play. Kenny Pickett's doing a nice job of moving up in the pocket, not always leaving the pocket, just buying a little extra time. French now has six catches, nothing long, but that was clutch. Quarterback fires incomplete. Something looks weird about with that tipped play. in there. Yeah, well, something looked weird about that play completely. His drop was weird. Uh, his footwork in the pocket was weird, and uh, probably just threw that one away. Didn't know exactly what they wanted on that play. Mark Whipple, a man who has a Super Bowl ring, coaching Ben Roethlisberger at the Steelers, says he's got to handle these guys differently. He does not yell at Pickett. That's not yeah. the way to get through to this quarterback, he, and he's not afraid to yell at quarterbacks. Right. Says they're all different. You got to learn what works with each one. Vincent Davis the tailback split out wide right lines brings some pressure it's picked up and it's Mack on a crossing route and he's brought down after a short gain by Taylor and it'll be third down yet again. Yeah and another good tackle because if Garrett Taylor doesn't make that tackle that's going to squirt for a first down. There's a crossing route against man underneath coverage and Garrett Taylor with a nice open field tackle to force third down. Has been accurate in the two third and longs. Lions had to bring some pressure again. They flush him, and he'll be dragged down short of the marker, about two yards short by Simmons. Now this is going to be a tough decision right here for Pat Narduzzi. They're close enough to go for it on fourth and short. They're on the Penn State side of the 50 yard line. Looks like he's going to punt the football, though. Trust his defense one more time here. There's a lot of time left in the fourth quarter. Play the field position, see if you can back him up and get the ball back in good field position again. Pat is not a riverboard gambling no, kind of coach. I think not. some coaches might roll the yeah. dice here. Chris Dula, though, is pretty adept, as a lot of Aussies are, at directional kicking and knocking it dead deep. He's done that a couple times today. It's a high kick. Hamler. Will make the fair catch. No, no fair catch. I thought he was going to at the 10. At the last second kept the arm down and a five yard return. So Penn State protecting a seven point lead begins from the 15.
Devin Ford, another true freshman, takes a turn. There's Noah Kane in the previous Penn State drive in the third quarter who was impressive. Flag down. In the area of offensive holding, which is potentially going to back Penn State up even further. There is no foul for holding. Nope. Second down. Really clean game, Todd. Only yeah. three penalties combined, no turnovers yet, considering the, the weird vibe at the beginning right. with the delay and the off and on. And the rain. It's impressive. Yeah, it is. Ford got two, so second and eight. Is rolling away now flips it to Ford in space little stiff arm and he's able to scoop for a first down across the 25 to Cassidy Hubbard. BYU and USC and Maryland by the way the next opponent for Penn State after a week off conference opener for Penn State on the road. Devin Ford gained a couple again as the Lions want to at the very least improve field position work on the clock if right. they can't add to the lead. Blitz Clifford escapes he can scoot now and he slides down began the slide very early though so they'll spot the ball back. At the 29, they'll need about two and a half on third down. Yeah, probably could have got the first down if he goes ahead and goes forward or lowers his shoulder. You want to protect yourself for sure, but it puts up a third down situation here. They train the quarterbacks like running backs here because they know in this offense they're going to take some hits. Right. Maybe it was a chance you're right to lower the shoulder, trying to move the sticks, given the problems this offense has on third down, which have continued today. Four of 11. Now they have three wide receivers two tight ends and Hamler to the wide side of the field and now the back expect the ball to go that side. The back is Ford. You give it to him and they don't move the pile. He got a yard but he's a yard short. And Penn State again unable to convert on third down. Yeah, and both teams right now both head coaches are saying we're going to play field position. I mean we're having a tough time on third down. They're having a tough time on third down. It's a field position game and we have a touchdown lead. It's like and the old I, days of this rivalry. Yeah, that's right. Turn on one side, that's Johnny right. Majors on that's the right. other. Play defense, be sound in the kicking game, and don't get beat by your offense. Gilligan to boot it away, rolls out. Nice kick on the run. And French drifts down, is hammered that's right at the 16 yard line, and a flag comes out. Penn State says they have the football, but Chisena. The receiver there now there's a scrum and his tempers are flaring. Well that's a penalty. I mean they yeah, didn't give him a chance a defenseless to catch, player. Yeah, they didn't give him a chance to catch it clean before contact. Which is center who may be the fastest guy on the team. Three year track athlete here at Penn State flashed the speed as a gunner but got there a fraction too early. Still trying to sort out things at the bottom of the pile doesn't really matter who has the football. It's right. going to be a penalty on Penn State. Doesn't mean the guys want to give up the grip on the football down there, though. But what it does mean is that you're playing field position, and now that penalty is going to give Pitt decent field position to start this possession with 8.43 left in the ballgame. Kick catch interference. Kick catch interference. Touchdowns from either team on the progressive pylon camp. 15 yard penalty moves the football to the 34 tie, which, believe it or not, is the best starting field position today for the Panthers. They've yeah. been backed up so often. Only 50 yards after halftime for this offense on the 20 plays they've run. Last year they had 69 yards in the second half of offense against the Penn State defense. They started to squeeze them last year, and they've squeezed them so far in the second half this year as well. Bunch formation to the left. They look that direction. They get the ball to French with a couple of blockers, but closing in to make the play nicely is Donovan Johnson, backup corner. Yeah, nice play. They, they've been really good on their perimeter defense, getting to the wide receivers. The ball carriers are making sure tackles. I think Maurice French needs to turn that ball up inside, though. I mean, he kept floating to the sideline. He's got to try to turn it up and get four or five yards on that play. No gain. A.J. Davis to the far left 
Pickett pressured immediately gets it out. Davis has been an effective receiver out of the backfield. A different look that time. They pick up nine to set up third and one. Nice job of Kenny Pickett knowing he had an outlet receiver to Davis because the pressure Cam Brown is coming unblocked to his right. He knows he doesn't have protection. Gets rid of the ball quickly to Davis on the left flat. Sixth catch for the running back. Again he's split out wide on third and one Pickett's rolling the other direction and looks oh. back and throws into traffic incomplete. Wow. wow. He broke a few rules for the quarterback yeah. that time. And, and really that's where he threw an interception that really was the backbreaker against Virginia. Same kind of thing rolling to his right throwing back across his body. When you roll to the right you limit the number of receivers you can throw to that's really not a viable throw. Back the across the comes up short Todd. I mean you wonder. How many more chances will one. they get? That's a catchable pass by Maurice Fred. That's a hard throw and a dangerous, not ill-advised throw, but a throw that Maurice French has to make. He has to catch. Last year with Allison and Hall, they would have run that ball for sure. Yeah. They haven't been able to trust the running game this year. Chris Dula won again. Play clock is winding down quickly. And they did not get it off in time. They do spend a timeout. To avoid the five yard penalty, but they've now burned two of them in the second half. That could be costly down the road. Looks like the wheels are turning tight after the timeout. The offense is heading back out on the field. Nope. Nope. Check it. They 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 did get the guys huddled up, and at the last minute, I think the side no. Nope. <laughs> now what's going on? Yeah, that was just the that. Letter ran out. Oh, little yeah. deception. Either he didn't know, or that was by design deception. I think Mark Whipple talked Pat Narduzzi into going for it here on this fourth down play. Here we go, huge moment. Panthers need a full yard. A lot of big bodies in the ball game. Davis. They fake it to him. Oh Pick my it. God. Look at the throw down the field, and he has a man. Griffin Stewart, the tight end, rumbling down to the 20. What a call! Fourth and one. It's a one-man route. Everybody else is blocking except this guy. Everybody's blocking. Watch Kenny Pickett sell the fake, bury the football, and then have the poise to make the throw right over the safety, Garrett Taylor. He was given chase. The ball came right over Taylor, perfectly delivered, 36-yard gain. Wow. Not only does he talk him into going for it, he talks him into that play. Pickett pressured again. Throws into traffic and the ball being fought for wrestle on the ground. Lions say they have it. It's a scrum at the 20. That Another ball was throw into heavy traffic. Jan Johnson came in and tried to rip that football out. Maurice French, it was a it was a wide receiver screen, and he came inside, and Jan Johnson came in and ripped the football out. They have not given a signal who has the football yet, but it did come out. Jan Johnson ripped the football out. They still be changing hands down there. What an enormous moment this is. Well, he wants to give up their grip on it. And you see one of the officials with a hat cam. And Pittsburgh has retained possession. Wow. And a deep breath for the Panthers fans. No turnovers yet today. The Lions are still lobbying, saying they have the football. Well, Maurice French, who fumbled it, is the one still down there fighting with Jan Johnson. French comes out with the football. And Pittsburgh still threatening second and nine now inside of seven minutes. Love the fact that Whipple talked Narduzzi, yeah. who's normally conservative, into wow. that play. Go for it and let's go for it with this play. Blitz is picked up. Pickett delivers incomplete. A flag comes down in the pit. Tipton could not control the ball. And that time, Penn State may have uh, created a holding Aaron. penalty. Office number 57. It's Gabe Hoy, one of the new starters up front there. And that's crucial. Yeah, well, it, now it backs you out. If you're even thinking field goal, if you don't get a touchdown here, this makes it more difficult. 57 the right guard working in there on P.J. Mustafer number 97 and that's a hard throw to, to catch it was too much too much heat on that little crossing route anyway football move back to the 32nd and 19. 
Not many penalties today, but that was a big one. Pickett lofts it downfield for Mac. Jump ball. Oh my God. Down near the I pylon. He's got, got it. it. What a catch at the one as he beat Donovan Johnson. He beat Donovan Johnson, and Lamont Wade, the safety, was in perfect position to help. But this is a case of a wide receiver having better ball skills in a corner. He goes up and high points the football, makes a clean catch, and lands inside the pylon. There's a progressive pylon cam. Injury timeout. The wow. ball came loose as, he, as his back hit the ground, but I don't think the ball touched the ground right into the pylon cam. Two defenders, perfect throw, and an outstanding individual effort by Taysier Mack. Could they win battles on the edge with Mack and French? It was a big question coming in. They haven't really had much success until that play. Yeah. The helmet coming off the head there of Donovan Johnson, who was the corner. And he's still down on the field. They're attending to him right near the pylon. What concentration. I mean, that was good coverage. Good coverage by Donovan Johnson. Good help by the safety, Lamont Wade. Just extraordinary concentration. Matt had made seven Mack. catches for short yards. That's really yeah. the first downfield play that he's been able to make. Yeah. And what a turn of events. From fourth and one, it looks like they're going to punt to the execution on that throw. Yep. And then this pitch and catch, and suddenly Pittsburgh a yard away from a game-tying touchdown. They have not scored a touchdown in any quarter other than the second quarters this year. <laughs> That's a trend. It's been a real problem. Break. Yeah, that's not a good trend to have. Just three points after halftime in their first two games and this one until now. Into the ball game comes big Rashad Wheeler, the 280-pound fullback, number 37. And you've got a quarterback that's not afraid to run the football either. A physical guy when he has the ball in his hands as well. A.J. Davis lined up behind Wheeler. Play action, Pickett, scrambling, avoids the sack of Brown and fires it away. Almost a very costly loss on first and goal. Well, they tried to fool him again. No flag. They tried to fool him again on first down. The same kind of thing. Play fake, slip a guy out in the backfield. Penn State was not fooled at all. Very good discipline by the Penn State defense and a smart decision by Kenny Pickett to throw that one away. Some nice calls by Whipple, but you know the Panther fans are saying that's way too cute. Yeah. Well, they're going to run. They're going to run two downs here now. Second and third, they'll run it both of these. If they don't score on second, expect another run on third. A.J. Davis, Todd Sibley are the backs. Keeper, Pickett lowers the shoulder, doesn't get there. In fact, he may have been stopped a yard behind the line by Garrett Taylor. Third down now. Garrett Taylor with a big time tackle in the hole. Here he is. Watch him tackle high. Because Kenny Pickett is a strong kid. He's a physical runner. Garrett Taylor doesn't go low. He goes high and stands him straight up until help comes to finish him off. He didn't get back to the one. That's where they're going to spot the ball. Third and goal. Extra offensive lineman in the game. Yeah. Two tight ends. Pickett spun around, flings it incomplete. It's fourth down. Pressured by Cam Brown. Wow. Cam Brown just came on an inside stunt. Nobody picked him up. Here's Cam Brown right here. You've got two offensive guys. He slips right in between them. And nobody picks him up, and he forces Pickett to get rid of the football. He had an open hand. A.J. Davis, number 21, was open, and it would have been a touchdown, but Pickett did not have time to make the throw. Three plays from the one gained nothing, and now an apparent field goal attempt with five minutes to go as Kessman from 19 yards tries to cut the lead to four. And he missed it. Unbelievable. Penn State wow. makes a stand as Pittsburgh was set up first and goal at the one.
Cassidy thank you Penn State trying to grind away in the clock now after three plays from first and goal with the one yeah. failed and then Kessman doinked the short field goal off the left upright and remember Pitt only has one timeout they used two already in this second half Penn State in what they call four minute offense now not just trying to use the clock make first downs they've got a lead protect the lead and kill the clock as much as they can you snap it at 14 on the play clock Clifford fires and the catch is made and it's a first down for Justin Shorter back to that sequence they expected to make the field goal but the play calls from the one yard line yeah interesting well again I don't have a problem with the first down play they thought they'd fool them they thought they'd have a wide open guy credit Penn State's defense second down you run the quarterback you get an extra extra blocker they have not run with great success today third down they had a guy open they just couldn't block the edge pressure so uh, very good defense on the goal line by Penn State more than anything and Pittsburgh still yet to score a touchdown outside of the second quarter only three points in the second half this season. Brown muscles straight ahead. And next time they snap it, it'll be down near the three minute mark. Yeah. Well, so many moments in this hundredth meeting and last meeting scheduled between these teams, but if Penn State can hold on, their fans will fondly remember the the big stand at State College. Absolutely. It was a tremendous goal line stand. You know, after the heartbreaking play they give up on fourth and one that gets them down in scoring territory, they rally back and they make a goal line stand that is uh, as good as you could ask for. Right now, Ricky Ronnie and Sean Cliff are going to use that clock. They're not going to be super conservative. They still want to make first downs. This is Brown after they didn't work the play clock all the way down getting yard. Salim Brightwell on the stop and here's a third down and four. Yeah, I think because they had to spend those two timeouts out as you point out one more first down yeah. can really begin right. to bleed this away. Now, I don't think this automatically means Penn State's going to run here. I think they might put it in Clifford's hands and give him a safe option. Again you've got three wide receivers now including Hamler and Fryer move to this side of the field. A lot of field to work with with those three guys. They check the sidelines. Play clock winds down to five. Important third down play. Clifford rolling, steps up and delivers a downfield throw. Dotson broke the route off, so did Hamler. So they don't convert and they kill the clock. Yeah. And Pittsburgh can save a timeout. Well, we saw a good defense by Penn State on a goal line. That was really good third down defense by Pittsburgh. They didn't give up anything. They forced. The throw away basically by Clifford and they get the clock stopped and save that last time out. Kirani went for the dagger with all the high percentage passes though they have in the playbook. He chose not to use one there. And that's a break for Pittsburgh. Can save that timeout. Gillikin rolls and boots it across the way and French from the seven. He's penned in and tackled right there. So 85 yards from the end zone, a minute 56 to play. Tonight on ABC and the ESPN app, Clemson in prime time goes on the road against Syracuse. Trevor Lawrence and company not off to a spectacular statistical start. Syracuse has been able to knock out, by the way, Clemson's starting quarterback each of the last couple of years, including Lawrence a year ago. Yeah. There's the PS4 college football rankings. Alabama and South Carolina scoreless. Oklahoma and UCLA in prime time tonight. Notre Dame a couple touchdown lead on New Mexico and their former coach Bob Davey. So here we go. Pittsburgh after coming a yard away from tying the game moments ago now has to go 84 yards. Four man rush Pickett flushed steps up delivers. And the catch is made out across the 35 yard line by Mack. Big first play of this drive. Again, Kenny Pickett not panicking, stepping up in the pocket. He's looked very comfortable. Even though Penn State is up their pressure in the second half, he has maintained his poise. 43 pass attempts, 31 completions so far. Pressure underneath. Davis that time is corralled. He's hurt them on routes like that. But Cam Brown ready for that one. The difference when you run a screen against man or against zone. If you're running against man and you don't get that defender picked off, 
That's what happens. Camp Brown was in man coverage. There was pressure by Penn State. And Camp Brown was there to talk, stop him for no game. Mentioned 44 pass attempts. They only averaged 23 a game. They threw the ball like an option team last yeah. year. Only one 200-yard game a year ago for Pickett. He's thrown for 328 today. But he's swarmed and sacked at the 30 by Shaka Tony. As finally, defensive ends for Penn State make a big impact play. Timeout. Timeout with a minute to play. And final well, we have a long time to yes. impact the game. The Pitt offensive line had done a pretty good job, and Carter Warren that time just got beat by Shaka Tony right off the right off the jump. It'll be third and about 17. A time to check in with Cassidy Hubbard. That's a sobering loss for yeah. Maryland, which had destroyed Syracuse, found themselves ranked. ACC taking some difficult losses oh. this weekend. Boston College hammered at home by the Hats. That's <laughs> Miles in Kansas, as big dogs. That? All right, Pittsburgh, two plays, no more timeouts, a minute to go. Got to pick up 17 yards. Well, you're thinking maybe half that yardage on this play because it has to be two downs. Can't hold the ball long, though. From the pocket, short underneath throw. Catch made by Mack, and he's going to be tackled right there at the 35. Fourth down and 12 coming up. Once again, open field tackling by Penn State has been, uh, been really good today. Just haven't seen the big plays that they've given up. Got to make the 12 yards here, but you're also losing valuable time. Yep. Here's the ball game. Pickett has protection. Launches from Mack downfield. He comes back and makes a catch. Did he get a foot down before he landed out of bounds? They say he did. They're talking about it at the 37. Defended by Castro Fields, and Mack has made another circus catch. And it's another catch the same way. You throw it up and let him make a play on the ball. He's the wide receiver. He knows when to jump. He goes up, secures it, left foot down. Looks like they're going to take another look at it. The previous play. They have to with the ball game on the line. Is under further review. Well, this and this is good for Pitt because this this is a timeout for them. They can huddle up, get their next play or two called, and still save their timeout. If it stands, it's a 28-yard gain on fourth and 12. Viewing it, Rick Nelson of the Big Ten, but that looked like a clean circus catch from Taser Mack, the Indiana transfer out of Brooklyn. Watch him get the left foot down, kick the right foot in the air. And he did control the football. Yeah. Bill Lamagne is in the booth here. Do you, do you see it that That's way? That's a heck of an athletic play. <laughs> he jumped from inbounds. Yeah. Like you said, got the left foot down inbounds, maintained control of the ball all the way to the ground. And he landed then after he was inbounds, he landed out. So the clock stopped. Big play for, for wow. Pitt. And correct analysis, Bill. You're not just a rules guy. That was a heck of an athletic play. It <laughs> sure was. <laughs> so the Panthers hey, tied. Game, re game recognizes game, right? Exactly. Well, I, they struggled big time on third down, 4 of 15. But that's the third consecutive fourth down wow. conversion they've had. Well, Tace here back uh, has made some plays. The receiver now. caught the ball inbounds. And went out of bounds, so the ruling on the field is confirmed. So the football is at the 37 yard line. 26 seconds to play, no timeouts. So anytime you're tackled in the field to play short of the first down, it's going to be serious urgency. Yeah, and since he went out of bounds after the catch, the clock doesn't start till the snap. Right? That's correct. Yeah. We'll be on the snap on this. So, so that worked out great for Pitt in terms of whatever their plan is going to be for the next down or two here. 
Penn State's defense also able to get a rest. Incredible. Stopped on four downs from the one, then pinned way back, and yet threatening again. I think you got to look to see if you can find French down the middle of the field. Lions come after him. Pickett flushed and just fires over the head of French into the bench. So they use seven seconds there, 19 to play. Parsons came after the quarterback. Yeah. We've seen a lot of that in the second half. I mean, he's all over the field making tackles in the run game, but he is such an effective rusher because of his speed and his burst and his length to get to the quarterback. He's a mismatch for any tight end or running back trying to handle him. French in the slot to the near right. Pickett delivers over the middle. Oh! Almost intercepted. He overshot the receiver, and Jaquan Brisker had his hands on it. 15 he seconds to he play. He had French right in the middle of the field. The safety split. Watch, there's going to be an opening right in here that French is going to run into. And Kenny Pickett just overthrows him. There's an opening. The ball just sails on him a little bit. Otherwise, they're set up inside the 15 yard line with a first down. Now it's third and 10, but only 15 seconds to go. Again, if he stopped in the field to play, precious seconds will be ticking off. Four man rush. Pickett backpedals, delivers, sideline, catch made. Max got it. They spot him with first down. They'll stop it momentarily. The clock did not stop. They're going to have to. Correct yeah, that. The they, crowd is cheering, but the Panthers will have another play. Penn State's taking the field. Now has to be told to get back to the sideline. Clock should have stopped as Matt did have first down yardage on the catch. Five seconds is what they'll have. They'll have to snap it and spike it. Right. Yeah, well, so with five seconds, they have enough time to just kill the clock and spike the ball if they want to, or they line up and run a play. It doesn't look like they're going to spike it. And Penn State's still trying to get organized on defense. They've got just a few guys near the line of scrimmage and eight between the 10 yard line and the goal line. So this is it here. Pitt's the last go play of the right last here. scheduled meeting between Pitt and Penn State. And now Penn State will spend a defensive timeout to get lined up here. Ended up being very dramatic, yeah, Todd. I mean, this, is, this is the way to send a rivalry out. That's right. Pacific Life game summary. Penn State struck first. Pittsburgh answered with two long drives. Took a 10-7 lead in the second quarter. Penn State trying to continue dominance after halftime. Jumped in front. And then the incredible sequence here in the fourth quarter where Pittsburgh on the strength of a Max Circus catch, had first and goal with the run, tried a run and two passes, and then doinked a yeah, field goal. Right. Got the ball back, but in terrible field position, and somehow put themselves in position to have a <laughs> chance to tie it chance, again. Still have a chance to throw it to the end zone for a potential tie. Not a high percentage play, not nearly as high percentage as being first and goal on the one, but they got a shot. And credit Penn State's goal line defense. Last year, they stopped Pitt on a fourth and goal and from the three-yard line. It was a big momentum play in the first half. This one even bigger with three shots at it from the one-yard line. They put an extra second back on. In fact, now they're, now they're nine seconds on the clock. That does change oh, that, things. That, that. Nine seconds, you could conceivably get two shots at the yeah. end zone. Crowd has just noticed that. Yeah, you don't have to make it a Hail Mary necessarily if it's nine seconds. You know, you look and see if there's a place to throw an out. And right now I'm saying you've got some room to throw an out route right here. Throw your inside receiver at that guy to keep him from running underneath it. Four receiver look. Pickett does deliver underneath incomplete. Wow. They were thinking the same thing you were, but it was not well executed. No, it wasn't well executed. And now with five seconds, you have to take a shot at the end zone. Yeah, now now you do. The reason you, you could have got that ball inside the 20-yard line, then you just call a red zone pass that you've worked on all week. This is outside of the red zone, and it's the last play of the game for you. Now Penn State showing a four-man rush, seven guys protecting the goal line, and you better keep an eye on wherever Taysir Mack is. He's yeah. been the jump ball specialist. 
And you better block this guy, 11, also. Pickett drops back, trying to buy time. Backpedals, flips it to the end zone. Jump ball in traffic, incomplete, and Penn State's going to hang on. Holding. Wait a second. Well, there's a flag on Pitt. It'll be declined, and Penn State will have the final word in this rivalry. What a game. What Pittsburgh a threatened again. A heave to the end zone. There's about eight or nine guys in the vicinity of the football. Well, Kenny Pickett did what you need to do. You need to throw it up there and let some guys get hands on it and see if you can catch it off the deflection. He threw it in a position where they could make a play on it. Penn State was there. They knocked it away, and they come away with a great victory with excellent defense in the second half. There'll be plenty of talking points, including the play selection for Pittsburgh and the first and goal from the one. But Penn State will now lead 53, 43, and four after 100 meetings. We we certainly hope these teams do renew this rivalry at some awesome. point. Yeah.